Welcome investors to the 40 Finance channel. My name is Jeff Beers. Today I'm going to be doing an AMD stock forecast. We're going to look at where AMD stands today and try to project what price it will land at after their Q4 earnings report, which will come in January of 2021. So we'll take some of the patterns and the things we know today and put that towards a short-term price forecast. AMD has a lot of momentum right now. They've hit very well on several product updates and the future seems bright, certainly over the next two to three years, but let's see what will happen in a shorter term. Reminder as always that my stock picks and projections, they're just my opinion for your entertainment. Please talk to a financial professional before taking on the risks of investing. But if you love investing and going deep on stocks like AMD, then make sure you subscribe to the 40 Finance channel. I post here three or four times every single week, so make sure you subscribe to catch all the latest updates. And as a free bonus, if you're interested in joining my email list, then there's a link in the description for my 15-minute stock analysis report. This free PDF report has tons of free resources and ideas to help you scout through different ticker symbols, see if they deserve a spot on your watch list. All right, so kicking things off with AMD, let's take a look at their last earnings report, which was Q2. Uh, let's look at some of the categories that they play in and how the year has been going so far. Okay, this is the Q2 2020 segment results. This came out at the end of July 2020. But bottom line, what all we're looking at here is how they divide up their business and in the highlighted boxes, you can see the first segment is computing and graphics. This is all their desktop and notebook uh, type peripherals that they put into computers. And you can see that it's been a great year. Uh, Q2 of this year, 1.3 billion uh, versus Q2 last year, which was just shy of a billion dollars. And that is up 45% on the year. So great run on the desktop and notebook segment. If you go down the second highlighted box, we got enterprise embedded and semi-custom. This is where you're going to get all your data center, gaming consoles like Sony and, and Xbox have, have a partnership coming up, integrations with, you know, Google Cloud, AWS, etc. And the one thing to call out here, as you see that this is a much smaller piece of the pie, I'm sure they have a lot of plans to try to grow it more. But as it stands today, it's somewhere in the neighborhood of, you know, 25, 30% of net revenues. This segment was actually down 4% in Q2 of this year versus Q2 of last year. I don't think it's too much to be worried about, but it's certainly a category to keep track of over the next several quarters. Bottom line, when we get down to the final yellow box down at the bottom, you are up 26% year over year through Q2 which is fantastic. You know, most growth stocks you're looking to be above, you know, certainly 15%, above 20%, and they are in that plus 26 category, uh, which is a great place to be. And perhaps more encouraging is that they have several other products coming out over the next 12 to 18 months uh, that one would assume will continue the momentum here. All right, let's look at AMD stock today, kind of get a feel for where things are, grab some metrics, and then we'll work on our forecast uh, for January of 2021. Stock price this morning, 78.88. Current PE ratio of 153.39. And the EPS there in that orange box, GAP EPS, and that's gonna be important because AMD uses a lot of non-GAP metrics. Uh, but GAP EPS is 51 cents through the last 12 months. Then if you look off to the bottom left, you got 52 week range. $27 all the way up to $94.28. And when you look over at the chart, you can see that AMD has a pretty steady pulse uh, once they've established their sort of price position uh, each quarter, it, it remains relatively stable. You see the big jump from the 50s to the 70s and even into the 90s, and that was from their last quarterly earnings report, the one we just looked at when some of their uh, new product news came out. At the top of the screen, you see trailing 12 months revenue of $7.65 billion. The forward PE looks very healthy as it drops to 45.45. 45. 
They have a cash on hand of 1.7 billion and a debt load of just under a billion. When you factor in revenue and the cash on hand, the debt is a very manageable position. All right, so to make our price projection for 2021, we're just gonna use a simple formula that factors in the PE and the EPS. If you guess the PE, you guess the EPS, then you can formulate a price. It's really that simple. And you see that right here on the top of the screen, price equals PE times EPS. And then down at the bottom, a couple points to call out for AMD. Their fiscal year runs January through December. So by the time January comes around, we will have AMD's fiscal year results uh, whenever they schedule that earnings call, uh, likely near the end of January. And that's right where our prediction is. January 2021 earnings call, you know, give or take five months away. And always keep in mind that when I do these, this is subjective data. This is me using my knowledge and my opinion uh, to put together a forecast. And it's based on you know future happenings, right? So a lot of stuff between now and then can change, in particular, uh, our relationships with China and, of course, the uh, upcoming election. Okay, so the first step in our AMD price projection is to choose a PE. Where do we think the PE will land in 2021? Now, we are gonna use some historical metrics to get there, but just keep in mind that PE is more like a market sentiment kind of thing. Uh, right now, we have very high PEs because folks are buying into earnings. They don't have a lot of other alternative assets that they can get into besides stocks. And so we're running at hot PEs right now. Uh, I'm gonna make my best guess for the future, but we could see a completely different environment in January, and that would significantly impact uh, this forecast. So we take a look at trailing PEs and forward PEs for AMD across the board. They're actually pretty steady. This is several quarters going back to March 31st of 2019. And if you just look at the top line in that yellow box, a relatively consistent run uh, over 100, right, on the PE. So some 120s, 145, 160. You did have a huge boost at the end of the fiscal year last year where it reached as high as 241. But for purposes of this video, I am going to stick pretty close to home on where it's been averaging and my projected trailing PE for January of 2021 is gonna be 150. All right, so we got our PE of 150, that's my projection. Now we have to make an EPS projection, and with AMD, we have to keep in mind that most analysts are gonna be running on a non-GAAP EPS projection, but in order for us to do a lot of our comparisons, we're gonna to have to run a gap projection. So the fastest, easiest way to do that, in my opinion, is just to identify a multiplier of where gap and non-gap have been running over the past several quarters. So let's jump in and do that. Okay, so we got a nice chart here from AMD's investor report that gives us the quarter by quarter difference between gap and non-cap earnings per share. If you follow the top yellow line, those are the gap earnings per share going back the last four quarters. 11 cents, 15 cents, 14 cents, and 13 cents. So that's where we get our 53 cent EPS that you saw on our first slide. Now we go down to non-GAAP, which is where the majority of the analysts play, and you can see the difference. Non-GAAP is, is generally always higher, particularly with the tech company. It's 18 cents, 32 cents, 18 cents, and 18 cents. So the non-GAAP earnings per share for the last 12 months is 86. And if you follow my arrows on the far right, you have a gap of 53 cents, trailing 12 months, non-gap of 86 cents. That is a multiplier in the gap's favor of 1.62 times. All right, so we're gonna take that 1.62 multiplier, look over at where analysts have AMD landing for the fiscal year. We'll apply the multiplier and that will help us get to where we need to go. All right, on this screen you have the earnings history and the analyst projections uh, looking backwards, okay? So the first line there that's a yellow box, it says surprise percentage. 
what we get from this is how much did AMD surprise us with earnings? Okay, so analysts collectively, you know, come to an average of X amount. How much did AMD go over or below that? And if you look right through that line, you can see that the surprises have been minimal, right? 0%, 3.2%, 0%. This past quarter, they did have a surprise of plus 12.5%. And we know that AMD is running on some hot momentum right now. So I'm gonna take that 12.5% surprise on the back of my brain and add it to what we have on the chart below, which is where analysts are calling AMD as of today. So I highlighted that sort of rectangle, current year 2020. We have analysts coming in at $1.10 for the full fiscal year projection. I'm gonna keep that 12.5% surprise in the back of my brain, and you look off to the side, uh, on the far right, the non-GAAP projection that I'm putting together is 1.20, so $1.20 per share. Then we use our multiplier of 1.62 to bring that down to make a GAAP projection of 0.74. All right, so a lot of simple math there. Hopefully you followed. The bottom line is analysts are calling uh, for $1.10 earnings per share on a non-GAAP basis. I'm gonna say AMD surprises to $1.20, and then we have to project where that will land on a GAAP basis, and I'm calling it at 74 cents a share. That is actually up 20, 21 cents, I think, from where the earnings per share of the last 12 months has landed. Let's see where things land when you put two and two together. At the top of the board, you got my 74 cent EPS projection times the 150 PE projection. That lands at $111 a share. Guys, that's plus 40% from today. So at least with my projections, that's a very strong outlook through January of 2021 when that earnings report lands. If you manipulate a little bit, go down to the second line. If we had a lower EPS, but a higher PE, right? So if we had a 65 cent EPS times a higher PE of 160, then you're landing around 104, which is still plus 31% from today. And then you go down, let's say AMD surprises even more. They hit at a 78 cent EPS, but let's just say the market is in a little bit of a downturn, so PEs aren't as high. I used 121, because that's similar to some other numbers we saw on that historical PE chart. So 78 cent EPS times 121 uh, trailing PE, then you're landing at $93.60. That's still plus 18% up from today. All right, so I stared at my projection for a little while, $111. Honestly, it struck me as a little high, but I'm sticking to it mostly because of AMD's momentum right now. I think that they just have so many positive things in the pipeline that investors are gonna keep buying in at that 150 PE. And I feel pretty good about the earnings per share, the gap earnings landing around 74 cents. So that's my take anyway. Now we'll use the tip ranks dashboard to see what are other analysts projecting for AMD. All right, and as always, when I'm in the tip ranks dashboard, I sort by the best performing analysts and I try to grab projections that are no uh, older than one month ago. You can see the dates on the far right. Uh, the bottom line on buys and holds, you got four buys and three holds. And then you look at price targets and you can see most of these guys are coming in, uh, I would say much lower than me. You know, the consensus high is right at $100. That's 28% from today. Then you have another tranche that's targeting sort of the mid 80s. So I'll say out of all my price projections I've done over the past several months, uh, this is one of the first ones that really falls off of where analysts are projecting. So either I'm a genius or I could be set up for failure here. All right, so the bottom line here for AMD, I think regardless of whether you trust my 111 or you look at where the analysts were going between mid 80s to the $100 mark, 
there's definitely more upside for AMD uh, to be had through January. I'm factoring in a significant momentum shift. And as we head into the holiday season, which will be sort of encapsulated uh, in my EPS projection, you do have the Sony and Xbox consoles coming out, which have AMD chips. We also have potentially a second wave of like stay at home orders, which I think will be very good for computer sales if that happens. So I just like the setup for AMD when it comes to news headlines. I would say if you're looking to buy AMD on a dip or if you see the market soften at all, I would try to target a trailing PE of around 120. That seems to be the lower range that AMD trades at over the past several quarters. You might get it lower than that, I'm not sure, but keep an eye on that PE because that's telling you a lot about where the sentiment is for the stock. If we are at that 120 PE right now, that would put your AMD price in that 60 to $65 range. So keep that in mind if you're targeting dips. All right guys, hope you enjoyed this price forecast for AMD stock. Please give me a like and subscribe if you did. Let me know where you think AMD stock will land in the comments below and don't forget to sign up for the free stock analysis report link in the description we'll see you on the next video